Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Yeah. We wanted to wait till everybody got seated so everybody would know where we are and what to do. We want everybody to be present. Amen. I know you're in here, but we want you to be present. We want you to be present. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Praise God, everybody. Praise God, everybody. Give three people a high five. Tell them I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Yeah. We want to welcome also our live streaming audience, those of you who are viewing us through electronics. We ask you right now to praise God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm talking to the live streaming audience. But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Anytime you say hallelujah, it's all right. It's all right. No problem. No problem. We want everybody to be with us as we prepare for today's lesson. Today is a wonderful day. It's the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yes, yes, let them, let them come in and get situated. I feel excited this morning, as I do every morning when God wakes me up. Take out your Bibles. Just let them come in. Take out your Bibles, your electronic gadgets and devices on which you have the Bible. And you're going to turn to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. That is the fourth, the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. The fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. The first book, the fourth chapter, and we begin reading from the English Standard Version at the first verse. Genesis one, Genesis four, verse one. Genesis four, verse. One From the English Standard Version, it reads as follows. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother, Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain, a worker of the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, Sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain 
spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother, Abel, and killed him. And then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? The word of God for the people of God. Help us, Lord, to get your word across to your people. Speak now to us and through us. Use us as your instrument. Touch the hearts and minds of your people. Let nobody leave here the same way that we came. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ask two people as you take your seats, where is your brother? As we, um, as we get started, we want to uh, thank God for, want to thank and praise God for our health and strength. Yes, want to thank Amen. and praise God for Amen. our ability to be here. We are so grateful to see some of our bereaved family members uh, returning and God bless you. We will keep you in our, in our prayers for we know it's, it'll take some time but God will be with you every step of the way. And we'll, and we'll be praying for you as, as well. Just know we love you. We love you. We love you. And God loves you even more. This question is the second major question from God that we have now in the scripture. The first one was, as we've already talked about, was, where are you? You will remember that. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden by disobeying God, and when they recognized their sin and in disobedience, they ran and hid from God. Their relationship with God was negatively impacted. And when they heard God walking in the garden, they ran and they hid. And God, in his ever-loving, graceful and merciful way, came looking for them. And he asked for Adam and said, Adam, where are you? So that we learn that no matter how bad things are and what we have done that is so bad, you can never do something so bad that God does not still want to be in relationship with you. God still loves you. In fact, affirm that with somebody. Tell somebody, God still loves you. Yes. He still loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you're coming from, no matter what you've been through, no, and no matter how bad it was, God still loves you. That's a message right there. And that's something that we can rest in and gain peace from, that God still loves me no matter what I have done. And God still wants to be in relationship with me. And here at Morningstar, we follow the pattern of God, not people. Our belief is that no matter where you have come from, no matter what you have done, we reach out to you as Jesus the Christ would. 
And we say we still love you. We still love you. Yes, we do. We still love you. And we still want to be in relationship with you. Amen. Because that's what God would do. And so the first question is, where are you? Adam, where are you? Where are you? And you did something wrong. You messed up. But I need to know where you are. And you always know that when God asks a question, God is not asking because God doesn't know the answer. God is asking because God wants you to know the answer. And here, now, in today's lesson, we have the second great question. God asks of Cain, where is your brother? Now, I want you to notice the flow, notice the pattern, that the first, the first, the first question is to the father, Adam, where are you? This question is to the son, Cain, where is your brother? So that the, the number one commandment of all is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then Jesus went on to say, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. And here we have this second primary commandment reflected. Because your neighbor is represented here by your brother, your family, your relative, another member of either the church, the world, the community, or so forth. Where is your brother? Where is your brother? Genesis 4 presents three things that we want to just say a brief word about, and then we will... Do the best we can to wrap this up. Those three things are this. One, Genesis 4 looks at connection. Two, it looks at contrast. And three, it looks at the choice. The connection of mankind, the contrast between mankind and the choice that mankind has. Now, but let us, let, and let us quickly uh, begin by looking at this concept of connection. Um, notice that Cain and Abel are in the same family. Connection. And they represent a picture of the same family the same church, the same world. They represent the contrast that you will find in the same family, the same church, and indeed, the same world. Notice also that Cain and Abel were raised in a, in a stable husband, wife, household. You know, we know that because Adam didn't have anybody to cheat with. <laughs> so we know, we know he came home every night. We know he was faithful. So Cain and Abel were raised in the same house, ate the same food, breathed the same air, had the same teachings and instructions, had the same parents, had the same genetic structure, and yet they're different. All of us who have had children, and more than one, can feel this story already. Same family, same house, same food, same air, same oxygen, same water, same genetic structure, brothers, connected, 
one family. Just like we here. Same, same church. We're in the same sanctuary. Experiencing the same worship experience. Sisters and brothers in the spirit. Some are called Abel. Some are called Cain. And this is not the only time we have this lesson. There were ten virgins. They were all virgins. All were a part of the church. But the Bible says five of them were wise. And five of them were foolish. Same church. Same worship experience. Same sanctuary. Same place. 1009 Chandler Avenue. So we have a connection, and we're all, and we're all connected. We're all connected in the body of Christ. We're, we're all one family. And this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Say we're all one family. Oh, yeah, we're, we're all one family. We're all connected. We're all related. In the spirit, we're spiritual sisters and brothers. That's why we say, hey, Brother Anderson. Hey, Brother Jones. Hey, Brother Porter. Hey, Sister Grant. Hey. We even use... the titles that further connect us, knowing that we're not biologically related. But we do have, spiritually, we have the same parent. So we are connected. So, so, that, so that we should enjoy this connection. That's why oftentimes you hear me say, to give somebody a high five and tell them, I'm glad to see you. Because you don't see family all the time. You don't see all family all the time. And so whenever we see family, we should rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, we should. We should be happy to see family. Because family is not promised to you. And we should never, ever take a family member for granted. No matter what you think about them. Even if it's your worst Uncle Bubba. I hope nobody has an Uncle Bubba. Please, Lord, let anybody have it. But we should be glad to see Uncle Bubba. With his, well, we should be glad to see Uncle Bubba. And Uncle Bubba may be a cigar, smoking, whiskey, drinking, cussing, and swearing, and... Uh, foul mouth, uh, non-working, always borrowing money, uh, joker, but he's still your uncle, and he's still in your family, and he still has a chance to turn his life around. And you ought to thank God. You ought to thank God for Uncle Bubba because Uncle Bubba keep a whole lot of us righteous. Because we take one look at Uncle Bubba and say, oh my God, help me Lord Jesus. And so we should be glad when we see family members. So let's take a couple seconds, seconds and once again, let's welcome some family members. Tell somebody, I'm glad to see you. Tell two or three, glad to see you, glad to see you, glad to see you. Yes. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Because you don't know where these family members have been. And you certainly don't know what they have been through to get here today. Amen. Amen. As my father-in-law used to sing the song, glad to be in the number, glad to be in the number, glad to be in the number one more. Yeah. And that is a good thing. So as family members, we're all connected. Yes. We're all connected. Reach out, give somebody a high five on both sides. Just do that. Yes. Find somebody and say, hey, sister cuz, hey, brother cuz, hey, brother cuz. Hey. 
Hey, Sister Cars. Hey, Brother Cars. Yes. We're all connected. We're all connected in the same, we're all connected in the same family, the body of Christ. We're all connected in the same church, Morning Star Community Christian Center Church, the best church on earth. We're all, we're all connected and we're all here together. And it's a wonderful thing. And you look wonderful. You look wonderful. You do. You do. You look wonderful. You look wonderful. You look wonderful. In fact, Tell somebody, yes. Tell somebody. You look, you look wonderful. Tell them. Yeah, you do. You do. You do. Make sure it's somebody who really looks wonderful. We're all connected. We are connected. You know, every now and then, family members have a, something that's a little bit out of, you know you know, a hat or, you know, a tie or hair or whatever. It's a little bit out of shape, but, but it's still family, though. That's what you like about family. With family, you can be down to earth. With family, you don't have to put on airs. Because you know family. You know, ain't no need even putting on one in front of family. Because family knows you. That's the, in fact, that's one of the beauties of family. It's good to have some place to go where you can just let your hair down and take it off. Come on now. Come on now. You can't do that everywhere. There's some places you, you, you can't go every place and just... <sighs> some places you have to sit at attention and keep things on. <laughs> but here at home with family members, you can, you can relax. We kind of know you, because we're in relationship with you. Come on, somebody now. I'm just, this is the way family is supposed to be. So that's why God put us in family, so we can have a place, where, so you don't have to be uptight everywhere all the time. You can have some place where you can let your hair down and, and, and just relax, you know, and not have to worry about what you say and how you say it. And not be all false and pretending. Amen. This is home. Now, I know we have some visitors, and when we have visitors, you know, you, we're supposed to be, be nice to the visitors, and that's a good thing. How many visitors we have? Raise your hand, visitors. To look around, family. Find, them, find those visitors. Look around. And you all treat them nice. <laughs> Raise your hands, visitors. Raise your hands high. Come on now. Come on high, because I want family to see you. All right. See those hands? You see those hands, family members? Yes. Treat them nice. Yes. Don't let them get out of here without several hugs and high fives and we love yous and, and, you all, and come back again. Because we want them to be a part of this family. Yeah. So they can come here and relax and be at home. Then they can be a part of the family and then we can talk about them too like everybody else. <laughs> Say we're all connected. We're all connected. See, through God and the Spirit of God, we are all connected. We're in the same family, we're in the same church, and God made it that way so that we would have a place where we can be ourselves, be genuine and be sincere. And to worship him in spirit and in truth. So that Cain and, 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 and Abel also, they represent a contrast. They represent, yes, the connection, the connection of family, the connection of togetherness, the connection of oneness, the connection of we're all in this thing, together, the connection of we came in different directions, but we're all in the same situation now. Uh, but they also represent the contrast that exists even in families, and certainly the contrast that exists in our world, in our organizations, in our church, 
And isn't it amazing that you can have children raised by the same parents, eating the same food, breathing the same air, drinking the same water, under the same instruction, raised by the same people, and they can be as different as the day is long. Isn't that an interesting thing? And it's true, it's, God knows it's true in families, and it's true in churches. There are some people who weekly sit under our teaching here. And some of them are called Abel. And some of them are called Cain. Same house, same church, same teaching, same preaching, same music. The music and arts ministry, they do not develop a, a designer songs for certain groups. They bring forth the same music for the entire house. I don't develop designer messages, you know, for, for those who need this or that. We develop what God gives us and do the best we can to flesh it out and give it to everybody. And it's amazing. Some, some hear it, some don't. Some live it, some don't. Same house, same teaching, same place, same pews, and as different as the day is long. Please keep reflecting, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. Just everybody, just think about it. <laughs> just think about it. How is it that we can be under the same teaching and hear different things, be under the same teaching and do different things? And, and sometimes it's done right after I finish preaching it. Cain and Abel also represent this other factor that we're trying to deal with, which is religion versus relationship. Amen. Cain represents religion. Abel represents relationship. And we want to look at that um, for, for, for a second. But the, the important thing is that the contrast that exists amongst God's people. And this is, listen, th this is the book of Genesis, which is reflecting the rest of the Bible. Because you know this happens from Genesis all the way over to Revelation. You, you know this happens from Genesis to Revelation. So this is not for any of us to back up or back away from, but it is for all of us to learn from. You see, because there's hope for Cain. Amen. Amen. Now, so the contrast, the contrast, Cain's name, Cain's name means possession. And we can get from this that his, he has a self-oriented focus where... Um, and we can imagine that he loves to hold on to things based upon the name Cain, which means possession. And perhaps he is a, an accumulator, uh, one who likes to possess things and keep them for his, for his own well-being. Whereas the name Abel means vapor, mist, transitory. And we can get from this that um, he appreciates the fact that life is short. We're only here for a short while, and I need to do what I'm going to do while I have a chance. Cain is a farmer. Abel is a shepherd. Notice that they both have jobs. That's a good thing. They both, they both work. They're both gainfully employed. This is a product of being raised in that, in that same house. And later on, you know, Paul will say, if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Which, you know, which goes, you know, which translates, sisters, you should never be so. Let me, let me stay on. Let me stay on. <laughs> both Cain, Cain is a hard worker. Now get this now, Cain is a hard worker just as Abel is a hard worker. They both are employed, employed in different arenas, but they both are employed and they both work hard and we know that because Cain bears fruit. Yes, yes, yes. And Abel bears fruit. And the distinction comes, the distinction comes when, 
will they offer their fruits to and their offerings to God, which is a form of which is which is their worship. So now we're coming down to their to their worship, and so. It, the Bible says that, that Cain offers some of his fruit. And Abel offers from his first fruit. And we get from this that Abel is a tither and Cain is not. Abel is a giver and Cain is not. Remember his name means possession. Boy, it's quiet right about now. We were talking about giving. It got awfully quiet right about, about there. But you do understand that, that Cain's face fell around the regard that God gave him for his offering. And we're talking about offering here. Giving. Now how many kings do we have in the house? Yeah. See? Uh-huh. That's right. Be quiet. I'm coming after you. This is a wonderful thing here. Cain, Cain is not Cain is self-oriented. He's self-centered. Maybe even self-fish. We do know that because of his offering, God had no regard, and the Bible says God had no regard for Cain and his offering. Cain and his offering. And God had regard for Abel and his offering. See, what we can learn from this is you, you, can't, you can't give right if you're not right. And why? And oftentimes, and oftentimes, the reason don't people don't give right is they're not right. You don't see the importance of giving. You don't see the importance of tithing. You don't see the importance of giving back to that that has saved your life. Mm. Mm. I got a, got a 18 to 22 hand claps over here, and about maybe eight or nine over here. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. We're talking the truth anyhow. Cain represents religion. Abel represents relationship. Religion and relationship. And I want you to notice that religion always eventually kills relationship. Because relationship looks up. Religion looks over. Relationship keeps its eyes on God and its heart on God. And religion is always looking to compare how I'm doing, how I look, <laughs> how I'm being recognized. See, religion will work hard. Religion will work hard, especially it will work hard, it will work hard at, at its own thing. It works hard, it works hard um, for its honor, for its glory, and that's what religion does. That's what religion is all about. Religion is all about lifting up the name of the religion. Jesus didn't come here to establish a religion. That's far away from where he was and where he is. He came here to establish a kingdom where there was no border, no steps, no, no, no graduation, no, no curtains, and no, no, no walls, no barriers between us and him. I can go directly to Jesus. I don't have to go through you or anybody else. I can go from here to there. But religion says, you, to get to God, you got to go through first the first level, the second level, 
and eventually you'll get to the to the great grand pooba potentate order of the great pyramid of the sanctuary or whatever. Got to go all the way up to and through the Grand Poopa. And the Grand Poopa then can decide, well, you know what, I don't know if that's appropriate to take to God. I don't need no, excuse my English, I don't need anybody telling me what's appropriate for me to take to God. If it's a hangnail or a, or, or a, a heart disease, the fact that I can go directly to God, that's all I'm excited about. And that's what God wants. And that's the way he would have it. So ask somebody before we go further, are you Cain or Abel? Are you Cain or Abel? Yeah. Cain represents a form of godliness. Abel represents true godliness. As I said, Cain gave some of his fruit, some of his fruit in his offering. Abel gave of his first fruit, right off the top. Well, pastor, should I tithe off of the gross? <laughs> or the net? Abel gave his from right off the top. And you know what? We now have live streaming. Those of you at home watching us, you have the opportunity to give online. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now you can't even stay home and be, I would give, but I'm not there. The devil is a liar. You can be able at home. <laughs> Tell somebody, come on, you can, you're, you're able, you're able, you're able. Yeah, we're looking, we're looking for some ables here. Are you still with me? Cain represents ceremony. Abel represents worship. Religion is big on ceremony. God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Genuine, sincere worshipers. People who know that after all you've been through, and you know you didn't get through all by yourself. And you know in all the directions you turn, you got nothing but a no, 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 but a no. And then you turn to God. And God gave you what you needed to get through. If it was no more than the comfort and the strength and the whisper in your ear that said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm going with you all the way. That's enough. You got through. Here you are. That commands and demands true worship. Because if truth be told, men and human beings, male and female, can't help you to get through some of the things that many of us in this sanctuary have been going through in recent days. Men, we just don't have it. We just don't have it. Only God has the answer for some of the pain and the agony and the anguish that some of us have been going through. And when you turn to God, I'm telling you, he will answer your prayer. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. And I believe there are one or two in here who have had to call on him and have, had, and have called on him and he has answered prayer. 
And if you haven't, I know I have. And God is an awesome God. He will answer prayer. He will come when you need him. He may not come when you want him to, but I'm telling you, he'll come. He'll come. He'll be there just when you feel like you're about ready to lose your mind, turn everything in, turn everything over. God will step in and pick you up out of whatever it is you're going through. And he'll walk you right on through it. He'll walk you right on through it. He'll walk you right on through it. And then when you look back over your life and you think things over, you know you've been blessed. 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 So you may as well, you may as well, you may as well give God some true praise, some true worship, because you have a testimony that only God gave it to you. Hallelujah. Cain did, Cain did only what was necessary to get by. Abel excelled and went beyond. Cain worked hard at that that he did. He worked hard because it was his thing. It brought him glory. It brought him honor. It brought him praise. Isn't it interesting that... Oftentimes, people will work hard because they know that their name will be mentioned. Abel represents those who will work regardless of who gets the credit. In fact, all credit belongs to God. All credit belongs to God. Because were it not for God, none of us would be here. All credit belongs to God. And God calls us all to have the spirit of, of Abel, where there is no concern for credit except that credit that is due God. And that, to me, is all of it. Amen. Amen. So that this, so that, so we have these two brothers here representing the contrast that exists and representing that second great command that Jesus talks about over in the Gospels, where he says in Mark 12 and 30, the first and chief command is that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as, their, as thyself. And then further down the road in 1 John 4 and verses 20 and 21, it says you... you, you you must love your neighbor. You must love your neighbor. And you cannot say that you love God, whom you cannot see. And you love, and you, and you don't love your brother, whom you see every day. And if you say that, you're lying. You're lying. And I, you know, I'm not, it's not me, I'm just, I'm not calling you a lie, I'm just calling you, I'm just telling you what the, what the Bible says. So if you say you love God and you don't love your brother, you're, you're lying. It's just that simple. Tell somebody, you have to love me. You have, it's, this is not a request. This is not a request. You have to, you have to love me. You have to. You have to love me. You have to. That's, this is not your, I'm not looking for your opinion. You have to love me. You have to. Now, you don't have to like everything I do or say, but you have to love me. Oh, yes, you do. 
Oh, yeah. I hope some of y'all were sitting next to a mean joker that said that. You have to, you have to love me. You have to love me. <laughs> you have to love me. And you know, that's the way they would say it too. You have to love me. <laughs> you have to, and we have to love one another. We don't have to like everything you do, everything you say, and we're here as a family to help turn you, Cain, into Abel. And we're going to let you know about that because, after all, this is family now. Don't let me have to go back to where I started. Because, you know, we can take off the, ha the hat and the hair. Uh-huh. And sit down and give it to you straight. Because that's what Jesus did. He gave it to you straight. Just like we need it. One of the reasons we have so many canes now is that we haven't heard enough about Abel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that, and, 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 and I deserve a whipping for that. Yeah. Abel was a giver right off the top. A giver way back in Genesis. A giver right off the top. Out of my first fruits, God, I give to you. Why? Because everything I got, all of it comes from you. Every last penny, every last breath of health and healing and wholeness that I have. If I'm on one foot, I'm on that foot because of you. If I'm on two feet, I'm on those feet because of you. If I got two hands, I got it because of you. If I got one, I got that one because of you. Everything I got, I got because of you. I'm giving you mine right off the top. Tell three people, be able, be able, be able. Ask somebody, where's your brother? Where's your brother? Where's your brother? Yeah. And just like religion, see, religion doesn't much care where you are. As long as you give an offering. Which is where Cain was. But that's not who God is. God is concerned about a relationship. God is concerned about us. And we know that Cain was off base because when he was rebuked for his offering, his faith fell. Tell somebody, is, ask somebody, is your, your, is your face... Or just, just think about asking somebody this. Your face is not on the floor, is it? Your face is not on the floor, is it? His face fell. You know what it looks like. His face fell because why did it fall? Why did it fall? It fell because he, the Bible says he was angry. He was angry, he is the one who did the wrong. And he's angry. Ooh. And isn't that the way it happens so often? The one who does the wrong is the first one. The one who messes up, the one who tears things up, the one who messes over people, the one who talks about people, the one who doesn't do what they were asked to do and doesn't do it like they were asked to do, they're the first ones to get all bent out of shape and twisted. I'm just telling you what the Bible is saying. Ask somebody, your face is not on the floor, is it? Your face is not on the floor, is it?
Because if it is, you need to pick it up. You need to pick it up if it is. Because God told Cain, if you would do right, everything would work out right. But you got to get right. Tell three people, get right. Come on, get right with God. Get right with God. Get right with God. Where are those fabulous praise and worship people? Where are you? Raise your hand, fabulous praise and worship people. Where are you? Y'all say, isn't there a song? Isn't there a song? Come, come on and get, get right, yeah. Get right, church, and let's go home, yeah. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, get right, church. Get right, church. You remember that song, Mother Porter? I know you, I know you do, Mother Porter. That, that one goes goes way back, way back when. And what God was passing on to Cain, who had killed his brother, which is what religion does. Religion will kill your relationship with God. That's why I'm so glad to be here at Morning Star, amongst people who are serious about developing a relationship with God. Not a religion, not a religion. That's not why we're here. I want to get right with God. That's what I want to do. I want to get right with God. I want to be right, get right, and be right with God. And you know when you do that, that means that sometimes people are not going to be all that happy about you. Right, right. Just like Cain wasn't all that happy about Abel. Abel was right with God, and Cain was upset not with God. God, although he was expressing his anger towards God, but his real expression of his anger, he carried it out, not on God. He carried it out on his brother. And that's what happens so often amongst God's people, in God's house, in God's church, in God's family. We have so often Cain's and Abel's. Repeat with me, I'm going to be able. Come on, say it, say it like you mean. I'm going to be able. Yes, I'm going to be able. Able. Where's your brother? Where's your brother? We need to know and look out for each other. That's the second great question from God. You move from where are you? to where is your brother? And he asked that question because he wants us to know that he knows that we should know where our sister and our brother is. We are here, in other words, we are here for each other. That's what family is all about. Amen. Amen. Where is your brother? Where is your brother? Where is your sister? Where is your family member? Where are they? Are they hurting? The answer should not be, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? That should not be the answer. The answer should be, I do know. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. And I'm going to do what I can to help soothe or comfort or assist or help get them through this difficult time. That's the meaning of the scripture. We are our sisters and our brothers keeper. The things that our sisters and our brothers are going through, their family, that's us, their family, that's us, their family, that's us. We are here to help get them through those things. Amen. Amen. And the more you help, the more you help, the more you give to your relationship with God, the more you give, the more you give to the building of God's kingdom, the more able the church family is to help those family members who may be going through difficulty. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let me, we're not finished, but we're, we're going we're gonna to stop right here. And, uh, uh, and hopefully we've said something that will, will be helpful to, to all of us. Remember that we are connected. We are connected. There is a contrast. But the third seed, the choice, it's simple, the simple. It's your choice in the contrast. It's your choice. You can be able or you can continue in Cain-like behavior. But I know, I know, you, I know you're going to make the right choice. I know you're going to make the right choice. You're going to choose relationship with God. You're going to choose to be a giver. You're going to choose to be a tither. You're going to choose to walk closely with God. You're going to choose to give God his right off the top. Because that's what God does for us. And those of you watching us by live streaming, you're going to choose, you're going to choose to give to support this ministry because it's been a blessing to you. You're going to make that choice as well. And sitting home and watching us by television or live streaming is not an excuse to free yourself up from, from giving. Amen. Repeat this after me. From this and, 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 and uh, streaming audience, I want you to repeat this after me as well. From this point forward. From this point forward. From this point forward. From this point forward I will discontinue. I will discontinue all behavior. That suggests, that suggests I, I am, am a spiritual, a spiritual shoplifter. shoplifter. That means you take all of the good that the church has to offer and you give nothing back. Yeah. That's what that means. Amen. Everybody stand. Stand up happy. Give God some praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. I can feel the transformations taking place. And that's a wonderful thing. And we're being transformed in all areas of our lives. In praise. In worship giving, in service, in attendance, in inviting others. Woo! I wouldn't be any place else. In fact, I may go to the, talk to the new members ministry today and sign up again. I've, I've signed up several times already. I think I'm going to sign up again. <laughs> and if you're here, you don't have a church home. And if you're watching us and you don't have a church home, you can change that. You can change that today. And if you're here and you know that some of your behavior has been Cain-like, you can change that as well. And God wants you to change it. To be that that is like Abel. The altar is open. If you're still faced with the challenge, let me tell you that God will help you. God will help you. He will help you. And he wants us. He wants us. To be able, to be able to be in relationship with him. To move out of the way. Forms of religion, ceremonies, and forms of godliness that keep us from connecting to him for real. And even though Cain killed Abel, know this, that the blood of Abel cried out to God from the ground. God will hear your cry. He'll hear your cry. The devil cannot come between you and God no matter how difficult your experience may be the devil cannot keep 
God from hearing your cry. He will hear your cry. And for some of us, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Giving can be a challenge. Working in ministry can be a challenge when it's somebody else's idea. That can be a challenge. Working in ministry can be a challenge. When you know that you've been working hard and you never hear your name, that can be a challenge. But God hears your cry. And he says to all of us, no matter how much evil the devil has done to you, even as Cain did to the point of killing Abel, Abel's blood cried out to God. So as hard as it may seem or feel to you, and as much as it may seem or feel that nobody's hearing you, nobody's listening to you, your voice is not being heard. Trust me, when you are genuine, when you are sincere, God hears your cry. He hears your cry. He hears you. He hears you. He hears you. And he will respond. He will respond. Heads bowed, eyes closed. First, let me say and let me ask, is there anybody in here who knows that they have not yet made a decision to be a disciple of Christ? We want to give you place and space to do just that. Is there anybody in here who would like to decide right now that I want to live for Jesus? I want to be a believer. I want to join the body of faith, the body of Christ. If so, if you raise your hand, we'll pray with you. And you don't have to leave here in the same condition that you came. Is there anybody who'd like to make that call even now as we speak? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty and the master's name of Jesus, you know these your people, your children, your family. You know who we all are, Lord. You know who we all are. You know where we all are on the spectrum between Cain and Abel. On the spectrum of giving, on the spectrum of service, on the spectrum of worship, on the spectrum of praise. You know where we are, Lord. And my prayer right now is that you will move by your spirit. Move by your spirit. Let nobody leave this altar or this sanctuary untouched and unchanged. Touch them right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Hear our cry, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch them. Change. Transform. Continue to move us in the direction of this being the best year ever. Help us to see that if things are going to be different, if we're going to experience our best year ever, we're going to have to change some behaviors. Let us see it, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. And we count it down by faith in that name. And God's people came into agreement by saying, Amen. Amen and amen.